I don't really get to do this much on the channel, so when I was reached out to give my thoughts on the Lexit mouse, I was very interested. It's an intriguingly different spin on a very standard device, or peripheral, and from the description I was sold on the idea of what it could do. Hint, it's got a joystick and the whole mouse can tilt like a second joystick. The question was just to spend time with it and see if it could live up to the hype, and I've spent the last week using it to answer that question. So, swapping a mouse is easily the most noticeably difficult thing to get used to compared to, say, a keyboard, because you get so used to the way your mouse feels, its weight, the clicks, button positions, how your hand rests on it, etc. So obviously, avoiding the initial, oh god it feels weird reaction everyone will always have, I really do like it. It's not perfect from a pure comfort level, especially for someone with very big hands, and I'll explain why, but it's not a bad design at all. I've used mice that feel horrible, and this is certainly not in that category. I should also note I'm currently using the Logitech G502, a mouse I know many people have, so I feel it's probably a good baseline to compare against. Weight-wise, the Lexip is noticeably lighter, for example, even when the G502 has no extra weights inside. Okay, let's cover the basic options. You have seven reprogrammable buttons, a scroll wheel, which sadly doesn't have an infinite scroll feature which I've come to love so much in my normal mouse. The cord is a standard gorgeous braided cable so it doesn't get wrapped up or caught in anything. And the bottom of the mouse is where one of the first differences can be seen. It is six ceramic studs instead of letting the whole bottom rest on the table, and damn is this thing easy to move around. It's easily the slippiest mouse I've ever used, gliding over the mouse pad. It's certainly not a bad thing, but it does take time getting used to. I honestly didn't like it to begin with, but after playing some first person shooters, I really started to appreciate it. That lack of resistance is genuinely lovely, and I'm surprised I've not seen it in a mouse before. I'm sure others might have tried it, but it's certainly not the standard by any means. There is also a highly accurate laser sensor for tight control in any mouse use, but I would expect no less in a gaming mouse, and it can feature multiple different profiles. Okay, let's dig into the really fun bits, starting with the joystick. The potential in my mind for a joystick on your mouse is huge. It gives you a wide range of motion and inputs that are totally unrelated to your mouse movements whilst not taking up another hand. Of course the question is, even though it sounds cool, does it really have a genuine use case? So starting with normal computer use, that being anything outside of gaming, the main standard out of the box functionality is pretty obvious, it's for scrolling around any program that you're using, imagine it as a scroll wheel, and yes, it really isn't useful in that regard, why use a joystick to scroll up and down a page when you have a real scroll wheel on the mouse? However, what did hit me as extremely useful was the fact that yes, it scrolls up and down like your normal scroll wheel, but it also scrolls left and right. And as someone who uses Photoshop and InDesign a lot, the ability to not have to either zoom out and then back in on the place you want to see on the left or right, or use the cursor and drag along the slider to pull yourself to where you want is lovely. Just panning to the sides is so easy and quick, and at this point, I should make it clear, I use every single button on my mouse for extra functionality, and I have different modes for my mouse for different operations, such as a gaming mode, an Adobe editing mode, and a normal computer use mode. This means I can have really useful buttons like Control and Alt on my mouse and not need to move my left hand to execute a command. So having this ability to have extra functionality on my mouse is vital for me to like it. And this leads me nicely onto what the potential of this mouse is when you combine its physical buttons with its remapping software. Because of course, whilst out of the box functionality is just the very basics, you can go and change any inputs to anything you like. Suddenly, that joystick can be repurposed completely. Maybe you like the left and right hand directional scroll, but think there is no point in having an up and down movement, so all you do is go and rebind the up and down to anything else you like. Choose from a pre-selected option or type in a custom keyboard binding. Total freedom. Also, the joystick has a click to it, so you actually have five inputs in the one stick. And what's cool is that you can have seven extra inputs on your mouse as opposed to, like, the five on my current one. Yet, it takes up even less space because so many inputs are on the joystick alone. The joystick also has a slider of input level, so the further you push the joystick, the faster the scroll. It's not a binary on-off input, which is very important. Why? Well, let's jump into the most useful scenario in gaming I can think of for a joystick, vehicle throttling. 
It's always been a bane of hardcore keyboard and mouse users that refuse for whatever reason to use a gamepad and as such have never had the ability to incrementally throttle up or throttle down their vehicle. However, with this you can push forward or back as much or as little as you like to accelerate or break the quantity you desire, as opposed to the full 100% on or off state of a keyboard press. I really love this ability. There are of course caveats to this joystick, and it's one of the areas I feel needs a few tweaks. For one, the click on the joystick is far too hard to do, it requires a lot of pressure, and because of the angle protruding at a right angle, you end up pushing the mouse to the side as you click it and throwing your aim or cursor way off target. So I would like to see it made easier to click and would really like it to be at more of a 45 degree angle, so some of that force is going into the table and not into your hand as you click it. Also, the actual knob bit to it, this is currently just plain plastic, it doesn't feel good and it's slippy. I would much rather a rubber tip that grips to your thumb and is more comfortable to operate. And back on my point of using the joystick as extra inputs, it isn't going to be as perfectly accurate as a button click, as you might get the direction you push in slightly wrong, or something like that, so yeah, it's not perfect. Overall though, I genuinely like the addition of a joystick and with some tweaks feel it could really benefit some people's use cases in everyday computer operation. As for gaming, the same rules really apply, it doesn't have any specific inputs that you can't do with a keyboard other than incremental inputs like throttling, but it certainly is great in scenarios such as if you're flying a plane in Battlefield. Being able to apply certain steering actions to the analog stick can be helpful. I find flying with a mouse usually incredibly hard compared to using a gamepad because you can't maintain a sustained input in any direction, you have to reposition the mouse every so often, this removes that need. Ok, so for the big surprise that I wasn't even aware of properly, I didn't understand it until I got my hands on the mouse and started using it, the 3D tilting mechanic. The entire mouse is on a pivot, which allows it to tilt forwards, backwards, left and right. Your whole hand is changing its angle. This essentially gives you a joystick-like behaviour without making you remove your hands from any of the buttons. And the promise I feel it holds is potentially really good. It's certainly a lot more of a gaming mechanic. I can't really see the use of this in ordinary computer use other than very specific moments, and this is actually an issue I have with it. There isn't a way to lock the mouse in place. It remains tiltable at any moment, something I wish I could click a switch on the mouse to stop. It means that clicking just normally tilts the mouse forward a bit, and it's certainly a different feel to normal, but it's not exactly bad, it's just something I'd say you need time to get used to. But back on the actual use of this tilting, it's really for, as far as I can come up with, and it seems to be the selling point the creators are going for, 3D modelling. The ability to turn your object in 3D space without clicking and dragging or other keyboard shortcuts. Now my personal experience with something like Blender is very limited, I'm far more used to a 2D plane to work with, however I gave it a go and it genuinely seems better. I think the actual physical 3D movement of the mouse should be less stiff. I found I ended up moving the entire mouse too often when trying to tilt in any direction, but of course the trade off is that the mouse is then too easy to tilt when you're not intending to, and again my reasoning for wanting a lockability comes back. Now obviously the design team has thought about this and they shortened the left and right click button so that there is a solid rim of plastic along the top to brace your fingers against to enable you to tilt the mouse without clicking either the left or right hand buttons or moving the mouse around. But I really don't like this solution because my long fingers rest at the top of the rim, so I have to crook them back constantly to be able to use the clicks on the mouse, which isn't amazingly comfortable. Now the other use case idea that's being pushed is in gaming. The ability, for example, to lean in Rainbow Six Siege just by tilting the mouse left or right. This sounds cool, but in reality I kind of found that in most scenarios, when I tilted it caused my aim to fall off because the mouse would slightly move in the tilt direction because of the force of me pushing down. That's also not to mention the fact that your trigger and aiming fingers are off of their buttons and on the plastic lip to brace against, and that ruins your reaction time to shooting someone and so kind of negates the ability to smoothly control your leaning. And so I found that really the best time to use this tilt feature was in a flying vehicle in games, and even then with limited success. The 3D movement, it's not revolutionary. 
It doesn't make normal controls seem ridiculous, but it adds a flair, a slickness and smoothness to your actions, and most importantly, does have the ability to speed up your workflow somewhat in cases like 3D modeling. Of the two key aspects to this mouse, the joystick and the 3D movement, I'd put the joystick as more useful and as having the most potential, with the 3D movement still cool but kind of hindering general control at times, which means its pros were pulled back somewhat by its own cons. There are also things about this mouse to take into account, such as the clicking on the left and right hand buttons is rather plasticky and high pitched, and it doesn't feel as good overall as my own Logitech mouse. But and this is a big but, I really like the mouse regardless. I love innovation, I love pushing boundaries, trying something new and exciting, and this is the most exciting thing I've seen in the mouse space in a very long time. This is the first generation, if you will, of the mouse, and even at this stage, it's really good. Whilst I picked at things I didn't like about the mouse, it was only because I genuinely loved using it for the last week. I wanted to test it in many scenarios and see how it affected my computer use. And the great thing with a mouse like this is the potential is very wide because you can make a lot of the mouse do what you want. You can customize what the inputs do. If we're going to see tweaks to the gripes I mentioned actually implemented, I don't know. But it's certainly a mouse to try and get your hands on. It's really unique. Play with it and think about how you could personally modify its features to benefit you. Again, I've never seen anything quite like this before and I'm sure people out there will feel it fits their own use case. It's not perfect and I think a second version may very well be a significantly better mouse, but it's a solid first round. I should also note the mouse comes in both a left and right hand variant, so no one is left out. Anyway guys, if you want to find out anything else about the mouse, then links to its Kickstarter page in the description. It's already smashed its target, so if you're interested in getting one, check it out there. I hope you guys liked this slightly different video on the channel. I would like to be able to do a few more of these review type videos at some point. Certainly monitors is the big area I want to get into, so yeah, I hope I can get these sort of different videos up for you every so often. Anyway, for anything 21 by 9 or just tech related, then head over to my channel page or the Wide as Fuck website and I'm sure there'll be something of interest there. If not, then leave a comment down below with what you'd like to see and I'll try and cover it. And if you'd like to support the channel, the links to my Patreon page are in the description and Amazon affiliate links are there too. See you later.